In this video, I'm going to talk about how to engage with and write about the sources that you found as part of your research project using the short article, The Mission of the University, as a sample text. Let me briefly review the major points from the Reading Critically and Analytically video, and if you have a chance, please watch that again. We go through the six basic steps, pre-reading, asking ourselves what do we want to know about this topic. We get an overview of the source by skimming it and understanding what the basic topic and thesis are and perspective. We read carefully through this, the topic to look for major ideas, keywords, important evidence, etc. After we've read, we take an inventory of, of the ideas that we've learned, make an outline, organize our notes. We write our response where we evaluate, ask questions, make connections to other ideas. And finally, we see what sort of further research we can do based on what we've learned. We're going to basically do a simplified version of this for this article. There are many possible things one might want to learn from an article called The Mission of the University. But just for simplicity's sake, let's assume that we're reading this because we want to know what are some theories and debates about the purpose of higher education, and we're interested in the challenges that are facing universities today. So now let's go on to step two, the overview. Well, the title of the paper already gives us a sense of what the general topic is, the mission of the university. So we know that the authors are going to be talking about, probably defining, what they see as the mission of the university. And the first sentences of paragraph one give us their perspective, their basic um, definition of what the mission of the university is. It says, what is a university? Is an educational community a place for teaching and learning? So we have the author's perspective and at least part of their thesis. Skimming down into paragraph two, we see why the authors are writing this article. They state, quote, the problem is that these essential but still secondary features of the university things that they describe like sports, a social life, research, etc., etc., that they have become ends in themselves. So this tells us why they're writing the article. They write the article because they believe that the, mission, that the university has a particular mission, but that that mission has become subordinated to other secondary features. So that's what they're dealing with. So based just on this overview, we already have a number of things that we can start looking for. We might look we might expect these authors to defend their thesis, that is to explain why they think teaching is the most important mission of the university. It's not a particularly controversial thesis, but they probably will provide some evidence, some explanation of it. We also want them to give evidence of the problems that they're pointing out. So what are these, which secondary features are they specifically talking about that have become overly important, and what problems do they cause? We might expect them to give us some explanation of these problems, what caused the shift in emphasis from one thing to another. And finally, we expect that they probably will give us some sort of proposed solution, what should be done about this issue. Now, we don't know yet if they're going to give us all of these things or an equal measure, but these are things that we can look for, that we want to prepare ourselves to find in the article, as well as other information that we might not yet expect. Let's take a look at the structure of the article. We notice there are three major headings, one of which has a subheading. The three headings are the multiversity, the marketplace of ideas, with the subheading money and metaphors, and the third heading, what is an education? Plus, we also notice that there are uh, a series of quotations, some large block quotations, that are inserted at regular points throughout the essay as uh, emphasis or as highlights. They're ideas that, that highlight what might be going on. So this gives us a sense of how this argument is going to proceed, that we're going to start by talking about what this multiversity is, in what way is the university actually a multiversity doing many things. We're going to look at the marketplace of ideas, that is how ideas are quote-unquote bought and sold in education. And the subheading suggests to us that we might also be talking about economic issues there. So the economic factors that affect the modern university. And the third heading tells us that they're going to be looking at just some basic questions, some basic philosophical fundamental questions about what an education is supposed to do. So this helps us to get a sense of how the different ideas in the text are going to be related to one another. Now we come to step three, where we read and annotate the article. 
Now, obviously, we can't do this together in this video, and I'm going to just assume that you've done it on your own. Um, of course, everyone is going to pick up on different things whenever they read through an article, but these are some ideas of things that many of us are probably going to notice that would be useful for, for many of us. So first, these are some keywords that we might pick up on. These are not the only ones that we could pick up on in this article, but these are some ones that I have identified as important. Um, we have things that are related to education, such as education, learning, wisdom, knowledge, research, teaching, information. We also have things that are slightly um, outside of that realm talk about the economy, business, politics, and success or failure in a more general sense. And then finally, a couple specialized terms in this article, multiversity and marketplace of ideas. Since those are key phrases and words that are uh, not exactly unique to this source, but unusual and used in a specific way in this source, those are words that we'd want to mark and identify and understand. We also want to look for uh, key sentences, statements, moments in the article when the authors really seem to express uh, either their key ideas, uh, they express an important piece of evidence, they state something in particularly clear or direct or uh, provocative, important language that seems to really encapsulate the idea. There are any number of statements that one might highlight in these in this article that seem to you as most important, but these are some that I have selected on this in the next few slides. For example, but as sports have become the most visible attribute of a school, pre-professional sports eclipse intramural and honestly amateur sports in importance. And athletes who have utterly inadequate training for academics are recruited with a vigor unknown to even the country's top merit scholars suggesting one of the problems that they have found in the modern university. As well as the next two quotes, the university has become a major corporation, its eye on the bottom line, its ambition to grow and grow and grow, and education gets sacrificed to ideology, and the students become pawns in the process. A few other key statements. The concepts through which the university is defined and the metaphors through which it is perceived inevitably reflect the larger culture within which it is situated. The university is an investment in a culture, in, con in continuity and intelligence. It is not primarily a financial investment, and the, reward the rewards are not necessarily financial either. Education is not just information, nor is it the processing of information, and students are not information processors. All of these seem to be getting at some essential ideas that the authors are trying to get across. This is part of their larger point about the importance of the university and its mission. A couple of final key phrases that I've highlighted. Education is also an enriching, a deepening of the personality, a stimulated curiosity, and a certain love, even reverence for learning. And for the students, then, the most important prerequisite for higher education is positive motivation, the right kind of attitude. Again, things that seem to get at the author's main point, their overall goal and purpose, their essential argument in this source. Now, again, I'm giving us a simplified version of this process. So we didn't go through everything that we could have gone through in reading and annotating the article. Um, and likewise, I'm not going to go through the entire process of taking inventory, but just to give us an overview of it, an understanding of how to go through this process. After you've read and annotated the article, you want to start organizing your ideas into some sort of coherent way, some sort of coherent form. So, first thing that you can do is outline the content of the article. Provide a paragraph-by-paragraph -paragraph summary of what's being stated. I won't go through the whole article, but I'll go through the first 10 or so paragraphs. In paragraph one, the basic idea that's being expressed is that the purpose of the university is teaching and learning. Paragraph two, the authors tell us that this primary purpose has been displaced because people are more concerned with professional credentials, social, business, political contacts, rather than learning. In paragraph three, the authors tell us that university sports have become big business and that they are promoted for their own sake and that student athletes get poor educations because what's more important for the schools is the big business of the university sports. In paragraph four, 
the basic idea that's expressed is that the research at universities is used either for the purposes of boosting status or for making money. Paragraph 5 tells us that the international nature of the modern university and its role in educating future leaders means that political issues often interfere with education. In paragraph 6, the authors tell us that the term multiversity was coined in 1960s to refer to this complex mix of different goals, etc., that confront the modern university. And paragraph 7 tells us that at the same time, the mid-1960s, research became the primary focus of the university, and that even though there were more students who were better prepared, the mission of teaching became secondary to research. In paragraph 8, the authors tell us that the university was originally thought of as a remote, exclusive ivory tower devoted to higher concerns, and over time it's changed with society, today being shaped by the capitalist consumer society of modern world and its concern for greater wealth. Paragraph 9, they tell us that even those who criticize the university still assume that it has a distinct mission to educate. And finally, in paragraph 10, the authors tell us that the university offers benefits that are not just financial in nature. This is where I'll stop. I won't go through the rest of the article, but you can see basically what I've done is in one or two sentences just summarize the ideas that are being expressed. This way I know what each paragraph is trying to get across. So you can do this for the rest of the article yourself and for your own sources. Paragraph by paragraph, this is what they're saying. In addition to outlining the content, the ideas that are expressed in the paragraphs, it's also a good idea to outline the structure. That is, what's the function of each paragraph? What is each paragraph doing, not just what it's saying? So going through the same paragraphs, here's how they function. The first paragraph is where the authors define the university and its purpose from their perspective. So this is where they sort of give us their thesis. The second paragraph introduces and summarizes the problems facing the modern university. Paragraph 3, 4, and 5 each provide evidence or an example of one of the problems facing the university. The overemphasis on sports, the misuse of research, the politicized content, uh, context of the university. So notice how here what I'm focused on is not just what they're saying, but what they're doing. What is the purpose uh, that they're engaging in, and how does each paragraph fit in with their larger structure, their larger goal. Looking at the same thing, the function of the next few paragraphs, paragraph 6 provides historical background to the problem and introduces the term multiversity. Paragraph 7 provides further historical background to the problem. Paragraph 8 gives a history of the way that the universe has been defined since its origins until now. Paragraph 9 offers a brief defense, we might say, of the existence of the university, although paragraph 9, I will admit it's hard to see exactly what its purpose is in the article, but that's one way we could define it. And then paragraph 10 defines the university in contrast to, the modern, ex to modern expectations, instead in line with the author's theories, uh, the author's uh, beliefs on what the university should do. So again, very similar to the first outline, but instead of focusing on the content, we're focusing on the purpose of each paragraph, what it does within the argument. And as you're doing this outlining process, this is how where you can start looking for patterns. So seeing how all the ideas in each section and each paragraph are related to one another. So again, I'm not going to go through everything that we've gone through here or everything in the article, but just looking briefly, we can see, well, one, paragraphs one through seven are all part of section one. So we know they're all sort of defining this issue of the multiversity. Um, and we can see that within them, we have a further breakdown. Paragraphs one and two introduce the topic and define the problem. Paragraphs two through five further explain that, that problem, providing examples and evidence of the main issues. Paragraphs six and seven then go back and provide historical background that explain how the problem started or what has led to it. Um, going into section two, we can see paragraphs eight through 10 are all part of this very short section two. Not going to go into much detail there, but notice how paragraph 10, where we have a new definition of the university or of how it benefits a civilization, a culture, relates back to and elaborates on what we had in paragraph 1. So we can see that this same theme of what the university is, what it should do, comes back again and again throughout the article. So now in the final steps of 
reading and writing about a source, we get into the process of responding and evaluating. Um, so this is where you would spend some time really thinking about the credibility of the authors. And here we have two university professors who seem to have a lot of experience in the university. So we can say they're probably generally credible about the subject, even if they aren't experts in particular about the history of the university, but they've clearly done some research. So we could say they're probably generally credible. We'd want to examine the evidence that they use. And we note here that while they do provide a lot of explanation, or they do provide a lot of evidence, it's lacking in specific details. So for example, they don't give us how much is spent on sports in universities today or anything like that. And they also don't give us the sources of their information. There's no bibliography here. So this is what we would call a more popular article rather than a scholarly article, even though it's written by scholars, because it's written for the general readership, for the general audience. We'd also want to pair, this is where we paraphrase the argument in our own words, and this is the actual entry that you would be writing for your annotated bibliography. And this is also where we can evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of the argument. If you recall, in a couple of the previous lectures, I talked about how to refine your research topic. And again, I, I encourage you to go and watch that video, Refining Your Research Topic. Um, and I asked you to put it into a kind of three-part statement where you say, I am studying such and such topic because I wish to answer the question of or I wish to understand some particular phenomenon in order to accomplish some end goal. So ask yourself for the articles that you're reading, try to put their argument in the same format. What is the general topic that they're studying? What's the question or phenomenon that they wish to explain or understand? And what is their purpose? Why are they trying to do this? What do they hope to accomplish? So in this article, based on what we've read, uh, we could break it down and put it in this format like so. John and Robert Solomon, the authors, are studying the status and work of the modern university or modern multiversity, something like that. They're studying what goes on in the modern university. Why are they doing this? Because they wish to understand the problems that face higher education today or the things that keep higher education from fulfilling its mission or the ways that higher education has been displaced from its primary mission. And why do they want to do this? Well, we know they don't give us a specific proposal or course of action, so this is really a conceptual problem. They want us to understand something, and what they want us to understand is what the true mission of the university should be according to their perspective. So this gives us a very basic way of understanding what's going on in this article in a very clear, direct statement. And we can use this to start and to uh, ground the larger, the longer summary that would go into slightly more detail outlining what exactly those problems are, what they think the true mission is, etc., etc., that you would write in your annotated bibliography entry. This is also the stage at which you want to try to ask questions about the article. Um, so given that, that the article, any article that you get is going to be limited, it can't tell you everything about a subject, so you can ask yourself what other evidence might support their claims? What have I seen or read elsewhere that I could bring to this article? Um, are there other things that they might not have considered, other causes or problems that relate to their subject that they haven't talked about? Given that they haven't provided a solution, or even if they have provided a solution in your source, are there other ways to solve the problems that they bring up? Are the problems that they identify really problems? Are there other ways to look at these things? And what other evidence might challenge their claims? What could you look for that might challenge this article? These are all questions to ask yourself because they'll help you to put this article in context with the other things you've read, to explain it in your own writing, what it does and how it functions, and perhaps most importantly, to help you to um, look for new sources, new material, and to keep you focused on your overall research project. We come to the final step, and that's further research. And again, I'll just give us a brief overview of the ways to think about how to find more information. What can we do from this article? What can we do with it? And where could we go next? So we want to ask ourselves, who else is talking about this issue? Who else might be concerned with the issue of the modern university? 
And that could include specific sources that are referenced by the article. This one doesn't give us a bibliography, but there are a few names mentioned that we might investigate. There's also, we want to think of what terms, ideas, concepts are they mentioning in this article that we can use as search terms for further research. So, for example, multiversity, marketplace of ideas, education. Uh, these are all search terms that we can use and perhaps in conjunction with each other and other terms of use to find new articles. And then particularly in something like this that raises a number of different topics, sports, economy, politics, research, etc., etc., which areas are the most interesting, important, and relevant to my research? Which of these do I really want to focus on? And that can direct you again as you go looking for more research. Finally, just to review, and remember all of this is geared towards helping you complete online assignment four and the annotated bibliography. Remember to read carefully and thoroughly as you're looking through your sources. And make sure that you're taking plenty of notes, but also keeping your ideas organized. So it's not just random thoughts here and there, but that you're following the structure of the argument that's being made. And you're trying to organize your ideas in such a way that they really capture what the article is saying and how it's presenting its case. You want to look for patterns in the material that you find, because that will help you to understand the overall point of the article so that you don't just get one little detail here and one little detail there but you understand how it all works together and remember to rewrite the sources ideas in your own words what does this mean to you be as clear and simple and direct as you can while also capturing as accurately as you can what the source is saying and remember to always ask questions and this will help you to pinpoint ideas pinpoint problems and guide you for further research